welcome to our greenhouse. If you don't know what a greenhouse is, it's where we start and grow our plants. So if you have a chance to plant some seeds, you might see that they're going to sprout and grow into bigger plants. So that's what we did inside of our greenhouse. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how we go from seed to sprout with some of my favorite plants called milkweed. This is a big pile of milkweed seeds. And I wanted to show you kind of up close what these seeds look like. Now this whole outer part, the brown color on the outside is actually what's known as the seed coat. And on the inside is the embryo or where everything is going to begin to grow. And then when it's just warm enough and the temperatures are just right, that is when this seed coat breaks open and that embryo begins to grow. Okay, so here you're going to see two stages of our milkweed plant. You can see in this plant right here, we even have the top of the seed coat still over top of the two leaves. As this plant grows, those leaves will grow bigger and that uh, seed coat will fall right off and will fall to the ground and decompose. And now you can see lots of different stages of our milkweed life right here in this tray. So some are growing faster than others, which means some had better conditions than others to grow. So let's pause for a minute and think about what they need sun, water, and great soil. This one you can see has grown quite a few sets of leaves already, so it's probably ready to be transplanted. So I am going to show you what that plant looks like when we transplant. Do you have any idea what we might find when I pull this plant out? So I am back and I wanted to show you how to transplant your plants from one space to another. So we started our plants in what's called a seed tray. So that's what I just showed you. And that is to help each seed have its own little cell and create a nice, warm, perfect soil for that seed coat to break open and for that embryo to grow. So what comes out of the embryo? What do our plants all have? Let's think of some things that our plants have. So let's take a look at this one right here. What do you think these are right on the top? Those are our leaves, right? So these leaves are very important to this plant. What do you think this part is in the middle where all of these leaves are growing? That is our stem. And all of those things come from the embryo. But there's one important part of our plant that we usually can't see at all. Think about what that might be. And as we get ready to transplant, you might see it. Okay, everybody, so I asked you what you thought that you might find when we re or we repot or retransplant these plants. So the important part of the plant that we really can't see most of the time, whether it's a tree or a flowering plant, is our roots, right? And the roots are an extremely important part of this plant. So even though this plant is only this big right now, the root system on this plant has been growing, growing, and growing. So it's really important for me to separate those roots so each one of these has its own space and its own home to grow. So this root has started branching out. Does anybody know why our plants have roots? Let's think about it. Let's think. What falls from the sky? Our rain, right? And when our rain falls down, where does it go? To the ground. And do our plants need water? Absolutely. So this, our roots, help our plant get water. So they bring all of that water up and it feeds out into the rest of the plant. So when we plant this, which is what I'm going to do right now, which again, you can see how big these roots really are. So I'm very careful to not really touch those roots and we don't want to break those roots. Our plants kind of communicate through their roots too. So we'll just tuck this guy right in here. And so now that I planted this, what's next? Water. So we have to make sure that these plants have a nice big drink because transplanting can be really hard on a plant. So we'll slowly water that and then we're going to let it absorb into the ground and then he's going to go up in the sun to visit with the rest of the plants. So now that our plants have been transplanted, well, some of them, lots of them still have 
places that they need to go and they might go right into the ground outside when they're ready, which a lot of them are getting to be ready. I said that we needed to put them in the sun. So our plants need really healthy soil. They need lots of water, but they also need sun. Any guesses why? There's some really important things happening in these leaves. What are some things that you need every single day that our plants might need too? Oh man, sorry, just having a little snack. Now, where were we? We said that, oh yeah, what do our plants need that we need too? Food, maybe not raisins, but they definitely need food. Now they make their food in a really special way. Does anybody know how? Our plants in a really special group called producers. So they make their food with their leaves. They go through a process called photosynthesis and there's parts of their leaves that help them make food. And that food comes in the form of sugar or something called glucose. And that's how our plants grow big and strong. So their roots help them grow and that process of photosynthesis by them making their own food helps them grow. Try saying photosynthesis three times fast. Photosynthesis, photosynthesis, photosynthesis. Now try it really slow. Photosynthesis. Now, this is a really big milkweed plant. And I said earlier that this plant was very important for a big reason. Oh man, this plant looks a little different. Doesn't look quite as healthy. I don't know. Oh, wait, do you guys see what I see? I see some caterpillars. This plant is a host plant. And so this plant actually feeds our monarch caterpillar. And that is who's growing right there on that leaf. And so as this milkweed plant grows, these caterpillars will grow and they'll continue to eat the leaves. The good news for this plant is even though these leaves will get eaten, the plant will con till, still continue to grow as long as it has those things that it needs, right? So it has healthy roots, good soil, lots of sun, and gets some water. And maybe soon enough, we'll see our monarch caterpillars grow and make their chrysalis. And then eventually we'll see that big butterfly that we all know and love. Okay, now that we learned a lot about how our plants grow and how they get to be bigger and what they need to be healthy, let's take a walk through our pollinator garden and check out some of the plants that are just coming back for the spring. Then we'll check out my favorite plant, which is the biggest plant in this whole garden. So all of our plants come in different shapes and sizes and colors. And just looking at these three plants right here, they're all different. This one is called um, salvia or sage. This one is called fennel. And then over here that doesn't quite have its um, flowers yet is called a black-eyed Susan. And you can tell that each one of these grows a little bit differently. Some are taller, some are shorter. The leaves are different shapes. And every plant is a little bit different when it comes down to it, just like us. Plants out here in our pollinator garden bloom at different times. And the reason they bloom at different times is because they are serving as a food source for our pollinators, which are things like butterflies and bees and hummingbirds and lots of different animals that help our plants grow. So it's really important to have plants blooming all throughout the season. So that includes spring, summer and fall and so that's the purpose of our pollinator garden here so you'll see different plants blooming some just sprouting back up from the winter as our our temperatures get nice and warm this plant is another host plant and this plant is called fennel so each one of these tiny little pieces is actually a leaf now Host plants are a plant that help our caterpillars grow, and this is very particular to a butterfly called a black swallowtail. And we're going to take an extra close look right here, because that piece coming right off of that branch to the right is actually a black swallowtail chrysalis. So that caterpillar ate this plant and got big enough to form its chrysalis, and in about two weeks we're going to see a butterfly come out of that chrysalis. There are lots of different types of plants in Airly Gardens, and Airly Gardens is 67 acres of beautiful green space for everybody to come and visit and enjoy. I hope one day that you guys are able to come out 
and visit with us. But we're gonna go see my favorite tree in this whole garden right now. And that tree is very special and it is also very big. That is called our early oak and that is a live oak tree. I'm gonna go take you up a little bit closer to it. Okay, so we are so much closer to this giant tree. Remember, this is a live oak tree and you can see actually how big it is. I'm gonna show you the canopy, which is this upper part of the tree and see how big that canopy is. And then if we step a little bit farther back, you could see how wide that trunk is. And then of course we can't see that thing that we can't see on all of our plants, which is the roots. So we're gonna do a little exercise to kind of show you how those roots function. Hey everybody, so our roots of our live oak tree have a really important function. Of course, they help our tree get its water and get nutrients from the soil and help it grow big and strong because this tree is over 450 years old. So that means that it has been here for a very long time and it has survived lots and lots of storms. Now, I want you guys to take a minute, find some space, or maybe do this a little bit later, and I want you to try and do a little exercise for me. I want you to stand with your legs nice and wide and then I want you to reach down with one arm and touch your toes and then reach down with your other arm and touch your toes and give yourself a nice big stretch. Now I thought that was pretty easy. Now I'm gonna try one more time. I want you to stand on one leg. Try and keep your balance. And then I want you to lean down and try and touch your toes. Oh no. Which actually is a lot harder than it looks. Our live oak tree has a really big root system just like that canopy and those branches above. It spreads out nice and wide and helps that tree stay nice and strong all of its life. The live oak tree is so special that other plants like to grow on it too. So a lot of times people confuse this tree with something called a weeping willow because of this stuff that's growing on it right here. And that stuff is actually called a Spanish moss. It's a different type of plant. It's called an epiphyte or an air plant. And it gets everything it needs from the air instead of having roots like some of our other plants we were talking about. This tree also allows ferns to grow on it. And this type of fern is called a resurrection fern. When it's too hot or there's not enough water, these leaves actually curl up and helps our plants save energy. So not only is this tree huge and it has lived here for so long, it actually provides a habitat to lots of different plants and animals as well. I know you guys couldn't get out here for your regular field trip this year and we really missed you visiting, but I hope this quick trip helped you explore Airly Gardens a little bit. If you have time in the future, I hope you can come say hi to me and come visit this live oak tree in our pollinator garden and the rest of the 67 acres of beautiful plants here at Airly. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you've got any questions, feel free to shoot them my way.